I'm really excited about just what God, God's put this on our spirit for quite a long time to have a, 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 like a, a training school uh, and I think with the conference just happening this is the ideal time to start it. How, how's he doing by the way? Uh, he's good. He's, uh, good. he's good. Yeah, he's good. Resurrection life. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. It's going to be fine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's a testimony right there. <laughs> Amen. No, I think I, I think we'll hear further testimonies coming from the conference. It'd be good to share them on Sunday. You know, I thank God that we're connected to somebody like Apostle Trevor Silvermoney and his wife Elaine, and these are true people of God who, like we just shared a few moments ago, people who came at their own cost. Uh, and you know what they carry on their life and we thank, we, we thank God for the anointings that he's poured into this ministry already but there's a particular anointing on their life uh, it, I mean, it manifests very strongly in Africa the UK it, we need a breakthrough more to see a, see a tipping point so it will manifest here uh, we, we, we really desperately need that in the United Kingdom you know um, in some ways in church, you know, obviously the word gospel means good news and we want to talk about good news. But in some ways we don't want to talk about good news in an unreal type of way where, hey, we just pretend everything's FAB and everything's cool and nice. Because it ain't, is it? It's, it's, it's not good. Uh, and, and we're not grim because, I don't know, I'm excited to be alive at this time in history. I'm really excited. I mean, I grieve for the things, the terrible tragedies that are happening in, in, in just so close to where we live and yet we know we're a covenant people with God but we're living in the last days I believe Jesus Christ is going to return in our generation and when he comes he wants to find faith on the earth he's looking for a people who, who, are, who are on fire for him you know, so it's not the time to, to kind of retreat and, uh, you know, put the tin hat on and wait at the rapture bus stop. Yes, I believe in the rapture, by the way. But it's not a time for retreat. It's not a time for cowardice. It's a time to get bold. And yet, I, I look at, you know, the events on the news. Um, and just a few months ago, Fiona and I visited a church in London. Uh, they're friends of the Maldonados. And, and great church and we were at a great conference there for the day and we received a powerful prophecy uh, from Sharon Stone but Paul Norton, the pastor of that church, his post there on Facebook is it, it, quite alarming, he said, he said when I planted this church in 1994 I, never for, I could never foresee the day when my security team would have to have uh, stab proof vests and have to be equipped with tourniquets <laughs> that's just, I mean that's a church in London you just think, man, that's mental, that. Uh, um, you know, and you look, even today, somebody in London, uh, one individual just got attacked by a bunch of youths. Islamic extremism, was in, and these things are on the rise. And we're living in days, you know, transgenderism, all the crazy stuff that's happening in the world. It's all kind of coming together. And, and, and my concern is there's, there's people in places, the Christians, but they're just going to get knocked over by it, they're just going to get blown out, and they're either just going to compromise with the spirit of the world, or they're just going to, absolutely, the spirit of fear is going to overtake them, and so we've got to be a supernatural people in, the, in this day and age, and, and be filled with the spirit of God, this is a time for advance, advancement, and I, I think even myself, I, I just want to, everything God's put in us, I just want to impart into other people. Seriously, because I think, well, if, what happens if, 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 you know, personally, I wasn't around? <laughs> Got promoted to glory, <laughs> something like that. You know, had a, an, you know what I mean? So, not that I'm looking to have my head taken off my shoulders uh, at any point soon, but, you know, you just... We're living in these days, and you just—I I want to see people raised up for God who are who are going to stand strong. So we want to see supernatural revival in the church. And by the way, loads of Muslims are going to get saved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Loads of Muslims are getting saved, <laughs> and we're not afraid. We're not afraid for our lives because all the days written and ordained for us are written in His book before any of them come into being. And we say, "I have not got a spirit of fear." Come on, we we'll say, "I have not got a spirit of fear. I have a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind." Praise God. Is anyone feeling a little bit warm in here? I think there's just a little thermostat at the back of the room. Oh, thank you, my my lovely wife. If I could just knock it down a little bit, it's getting a little bit on the warm side. Right, so a supernatural church, okay? This is supernatural school. This is a vast subject. I'm excited about it because people who sit under this are going to get changed. 
amen. Amen. It's going to change your life. Yeah, come on. Amen. Now, last night, um, I don't know if you know... I don't know if you'll start again. I'll start sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Trevor taught me off for that in the car yesterday. Yeah. You tell me off for that all the time, yeah. Right, I'll start a proper sentence. Last Friday, you may have noticed uh, that, that Pastor Joel Taller from Manchester came. And he's uh, someone who we've connected with off and on over the years. And he invited me t- to his... They have a prayer conference on this week in Manchester. And they called it... In, in an emergency, their building's 200 metres away from where the, 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 the tragedy happened two weeks ago. It's, it's right next to that uh, um, centre place. So I went there last night and there was uh, a guy from the States, an, an Irish guy called uh, Pastor Paul Brady, one, was ministering on prayer. And it was an awesome message. And, you know, that faith like church in Manchester has really got the spirit of faith and really got the spirit of prayer and their burden for their city and so here we are like you know we want to be a supernatural church and a supernatural people and just first scripture to throw out there let's look at this Matthew 21 Matthew 21 is this the type of is this the type of move of God that we want to see if we look at verse 14 and it says and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them Wow. Oh. So we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. So we want to see the blind and the lame come. We want to see the terminally ill come. We want to see the demon possessed come. We want to see the deaf come, the dumb come. The, the people whose lives are completely bound up by addictions and marriages all messed and oppressed people. We want to see them come and to see Jesus heal them. Wow, that is revival. That is going to turn Leeds upside down. That's going to turn Bradford in West Yorkshire upside down. But there's the, the, obviously the clue as to how we see that is in the verse before. Verse 13 says, My house shall be called a house of prayer. Wow. I think in another gospel it says, A house of prayer for all nations. All nations. And that word nation in New Testament Greek is the word ethnos. mean every type of ethnic background and culture. The church of Jesus Christ is to be a house of prayer. A place where people connect with the living God in spirit and in truth. And that results in an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and miracles and power. Where, you know, what was happening here in the temple, there was no miracles going on. Jesus went in and sorted the place out. And it kind of like brought it to its original purpose. The purpose of a temple is a, is a place where God and man intersect and meet one another. And the result is explosions of power and miracles and signs and wonders. Because God is a supernatural God. God is all about miracles. Miracles are central to the Bible. I just say challenge anybody. Get a brand new Bible with a marker pen. Start a Genesis and just highlight with a highlighter pen, everything supernatural in the whole Bible. From Genesis through to Revelation, and your Bible will be completely covered. It's like so utterly, obviously there. And yet for much of the church, it's like the elephant on the table. It's something that isn't real. It's not talked about. It's a fairy to- story. It belongs back in history. No, Moses really did part the Red Sea. And things like axe heads going in water and coming back up. And multiplication of food. And all these miracles really happen. And all the, the miracles on people's lives, they're, they're in the office of. Uh, so... What's taken place here is Jesus has gone in, he said, he, he said, look, my house is going to be a house of prayer. Now let's back up a little bit more and go back to verse 12. It says, and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And the result of that is the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, this is going on from verse 15, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased and said unto him, Do you not hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings your perfected praise? Now there's so much in this passage for what? 
what we are as a supernatural people. Now I believe this is really uh, timely for us. We've just had a conference. We've had a man and woman of God come with a cleansing power upon their lives. Not a condemnation power, but when you sit under a ministry like that for what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, and then the ladies too hot, you feel cleansed, you feel renewed, and it's like, it, it's like the first thing that needs to happen is every demonic attachment and lie has to be driven out of our lives. There has to be a cleansing of the temple. Again, that's not a condemnation thing. That's not a, like a get, get overly introspective and guilt, although the Holy Spirit will point issues out. And, and it's interesting that in this particular passage, the things that God cleanses out of the temple before he can bring about its real purpose, because the purpose of the temple where God and man intersect is a result in an outpouring of miracles, outpouring of supernatural signs and wonders. That's God's purpose for the church. What does Jesus cleanse out? It's things to do in the areas of finance and worship. So he overthrows the table of the money changers and the seats of them that sell doves. Okay, so... Where, where, I mean, I mean, this isn't a message on prosperity or on giving, and it's not a, it's it's not a thing to try and get money out of people. But nothing shows where the heart of man is than what he does with his money. By the way, I just felt, and it's this again, it's not a, a, a put an obligation on people to give. But I think if we, if, if if people come on a Wednesday night, let's sow, let's give. I've just left the offering buckets there. Uh, uh, you know, let's sow to the word of God. Okay, but. One thing God's going to do with his people, he's going to cleanse their hearts out in any area to do with finances and worship. Because the two are connected together. And, um, you know, when you look through the history of God's people, all trouble begins with God's people when they have unholy connections with the spirit realm. I mean, I just look at the story of King David, and what an amazing story, the kingdom of David. And then his son Solomon, the, 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 the trouble began when he worshipped other gods. As soon as he had contact with those demonic spirits, problems came into the kingdom. Then with his son Rehoboam, the kingdom got divided. So God has to deal with these things in the church. I mean, I could spend you know, a little bit of time on this, but I won't go down that road. There's a, just because, in a sense, outwardly, the, uh, what is said might sound right, doesn't mean it's always the Spirit of God. Because Jesus himself said, the lips can say one thing, but the heart is somewhere else. Okay, people can be getting controlled by things other than the Holy Spirit, and yet be saying the right things. And look, if, if, if people are not being set free, if yokes and burdens are not being removed, if the anointing of God is not present, that means the Spirit of God's absent. And if the Spirit of God's absent, what is there fulfilling filling that void? Just we've got to, If we're going to be supernatural people and walk in, spirit, in the spirit, we've got to be people of discernment. Yeah. We're not judging. But I tell you, the spirit realm works like this. It works on authority. Yeah. If there is a vacuum of authority, it is filled with something else. Yeah. Okay, do you understand that? Now, this is a conversation I have with Pastor Trevor. So, you know, African demons are very in your face. You know, English demons or not. English demons are smart. They're very clever. English demons are mm, they're very clever. I mean we're a little country. We ruled the world. <laughs> we took over the whole world. This tiny little nation that we live in took over the world. Yes God in his sovereignty allowed it. But that was man not being led by the spirit. He was being led by something. Uh, very, very clever. So if there's ever a vacuum, if the Spirit of God's not moving in the place, something's moving. And it's subtle, and it's different mindsets. And so, we want to have a move of God. And in this passage, Jesus has cleansed these things out. Okay. So when God cleanses the house, it becomes a pure ha temple, a house of prayer. And something that Pastor Paul Brady was sharing last night, look... The church has got to be a house of prayer. I mean, it's obvious. Just think about it. There are millions of people out there who are desperate to connect with God. And they need a house of prayer to connect with God. I mean, God's put on a heart. And we're, from September, we're going to be allowing this building to be used on mornings for Esau classes from the charity project next door, St. Vincent's. That will run on a morning, and on one, maybe two afternoons, 
we will do a lunchtime church service for, for these uh, asylum seeker refugee people. And part of the burden for that is to give them an altar. Yes, give them some clothes and a cup of tea and some food. But give them an altar where they can meet God. Because these people need miracles. These people need breakthroughs. And help them connect with the living God so there is an altar, a place where they can get absolute revival in their lives. So God's wanting to cleanse his temple, right? He wants to drive the thief out so there's no more stealing, no more killing, no more destroying. And so that there's life in abundance because this is supernatural. Every demonic yoke destroyed from God's people. Now listen, what, if, if we're not walking in victory and power, that means what is standing between you and those blessings being manifested? For instance, Ephesians talks about spiritual warfare in chapter 6, okay? It says that, you know, we don't fight flesh and blood. People are never the enemy. We we'll never oppose people. We we'll never want to speak bad of people, organizations or anything. But our, our battle is against forces in the heavenly realms, in the spirit realm. Okay, principalities, powers, demons. Okay, and yet chapter 1 of Ephesians verse 3 says we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. So what's the deal? The spirit realm is a place of warfare, but it's also where our blessing is. So we've got to learn to walk in the spirit and fight in the spirit, because if the blessing ain't being released, there's something is holding it back, and what that is demonic. So as a people of God, we've got to rise up now. Start off by saying at the beginning, look, we're living in days that are dark. We're living in days where fear is going to be increasing. And people can sing, you know, an Oasis song, Don't Look Back, and I'm going to have a candlelit vigil and stuff like that. And that's a nice, you know, and we're all united and stand together. But the Bible says fear. People's hearts are going to fail them for fear in the last days. And so what happens is the people of God, we have to have something stronger on the inside of us. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. We have to have something stronger on the inside of us rising up. And so this is how we we'll learn to walk in the Spirit. Okay. Have you ever, I think I was having a chat with someone recently. Uh, uh, and, and have you ever had this experience where you, you think, oh, something just came upon me? You know, I feel depressed, I feel heavy. And you try to deal with it with psychology. Now what's happened is a spirit has come upon you. Imagine this is a black cloth, okay, and it's just got writing on it. Depression, heaviness, you are no good. You are a failure. You are going to, you know what I mean. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares. You're all alone. And what happens is a spirit, a spirit comes upon you. Okay? Why am I saying that? Because Luke 24, 49 says that we ought to wait upon God until we are clothed with power from on high. Now, get this right, spirits all interact basically in the same way. Okay, just like human beings interact. So, a contact with a human being, you know, I could come, hello my brother, and well, there's a contact, human being to human being. Now, there's a contact, you know, with a good man. You can have someone over here, I'm not pointing anyone. This guy here, who's actually a man full of evil in his heart, you go, hello, it's a contact, okay, with a human being. For instance, a, a man can have intimacy with his wife, he can sleep with a prostitute. The actual interaction is the same. Understand how a human being interacts? Spirits are the same. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, okay? When you learn to wait upon God, when we learn to wait upon the Lord, that word wait, cathedro, means learn to sit in the place of authority. That's what it means in Greek. Ephesians 2, start with Christ. When we learn to rest in the Lord, wait on the Lord, be a holy priesthood, a people of prayer, a people of power, then the Spirit of God comes upon us. And this spirit doesn't oppress us, does it? And when that says, you shall be clothed, it's the word endure, and it means to put on a second skin. Wow! So you've got this like Gucci Armani, the best that God wants to put on you. That's the anointing. 
And so what happens is that's how spirits operate, whether it's the Holy Spirit, who is holy, or an unholy, demonic spirit. So when we're depressed, when we're heavy, when we're failing, when we're in, you know, it's basically we try and get out of that through psychology. We try and get out of that through all these different ways. Yes, we may have yielded to the flesh. You know, that message we heard on Sunday was very good. We may have yielded to the flesh and we've come under oppression. But now, we're tr- now that we're under that oppression, we're trying to get out of it in natural ways. And actually, you just go further into it and further into it and further into it. And you think you're getting free, you're actually getting more and more deceived and further away from the Holy Spirit. The way into the Spirit of God is throw off all these natural ways and learn how to interact with God. That we'll learn how to pray. We'll learn how to praise. We'll get spiritually fit. we get spiritually fit. You know, being in ministry, I'm just saying this is not a boast at all, but I believe nowadays, it's, it's certainly to have any kind of healing and deliverance ministry, it's impossible to be in ministry and deal with the demonic oppression and the flack and the attack that comes against you without regular, without regular fasting. Okay? Now I'm not throwing that out there so someone's going to go and kill themselves at it or anything like that. I believe if, if, if you're in this school, you will be someone who regularly fasts. Okay? <coughs> it's not self-flagellation at all. And we wouldn't advocate, you know, like Okay, we're all going to run 26 miles tomorrow. Some of us will drop dead. But if we're saying we're going to run a marathon in 12 months' time, we can start training and building ourselves up. The important thing is that we get in a soldier mentality, in an athlete mentality, which the New Testament talks about, and think, I'm going to start getting fit. I look at the world around me and I think, I want to be fit. I want to be switched on. Because there's times I've come under attack myself, heavy attack, and this stuff started to come upon me, the heaviness, right, like a big black sheet comes over your mind, and it's over your eyes, and it gets thicker, you know what it is, veils come upon you, veils, what's a veil, it's like what a bride has, now if one veil, imagine this is like a really, like a veil material, if one veil comes over your eyes, you don't notice it, but then if another one comes on, another one, before you know it, you're blind, and you didn't even see it coming, because it was so gradual. And you can be in these places where you're oppressed, demonically oppressed, living under oppression, and it would, in that place it would feel easier to give in and just go with the floor, just go down the broad road. It would be easier. And that's where... <laughs> That's what the Bible talks about when it talks about the grave falling away. So we can't be down that way. And this is not a fear message, anything. This is a boldness message and an authority message. Because we can feel, well, if I just give in and just go with the flow, I'll be okay. I'll be safe in the crowd. We won't be. We won't be. I want to be in the will of God. I want to be right in the will of God. Hallelujah. I remember like when we first, you know, I first started going to Africa to preach in Africa. In in, in Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. And it carries risks. And I said, well, if I wasn't in the will of God, I could get taken out on the M1. I just want to be in the will of God. In the will of God, we are safe. We are safe. But there is battle. Keep an eye on that time. So, we are people. God is cleansing his temple out, okay? And when he cleanses it out, and he deals with his issues in our hearts deals with it in the church, we become a portal for heaven, a house of prayer, okay? The blind, the lame, I tell you, the miracles are just going to be something else. This whole mindset that it doesn't work in the UK is a lie. The reason it's not happening in the UK like it is in Africa and South America is because there's very few houses of prayers. That is the reason. And, and, and it's like something uh, Pastor Paul Brady shared, he shared this last night, he said, it's fine to have programs, that's okay. It's okay to have programs in the church, but if they're not born out of prayer, it is a complete and utter failure and a complete anything 
that we do as a church that does not come out of prayer intercession and seeking God is an absolute failure and a total and utter dead work yeah. it might be good but it's not it's not God's it's not God hallelujah praise God so what's this going to bring what's this going to bring Jesus says he's going to get rid of the thieves in the temple He's going to clear this out. What happens when the thief, is, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy? He says, I'm going to bring life. So Jesus has cleared the thief out of the temple. The, temp, the, the, the church is the house of prayer. The miracles start happening. We'll have life in abundance. Wow. Wow. Do you know what that means? That means there is an overflow of revival coming from the house of God. And then don't be surprised when that revival starts touching your personal life. When you, these relatives that you thought could never be saved, get saved. When your finances go through the roof and your business just explodes and your children are serving God with you. Amen. We're standing for those things. Has God not already decided that's what he wants for us? So what stands between us and that? A devil and us, the unbelief. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So a sign that a church is a house of prayer is the supernatural, is miracles. And we need it more. I'm just humbled by God. The very first service we had in this building, we saw a lady, Sharon, no more hearing aids, no more seizures. 15 years of epileptic seizures, and deafness, and her deafness was confirmed by uh, what some doctor who tested her, completely healed, boom, on, on our first service. That's God's way of saying, look, this is a house of prayer. This is a house of prayer. Amen. Might not look very flash, very impressive, but it's a place where there can be a genuine encounter with God. Okay, and it's in this place where what happens, this amazing thing happens, and the chief priests and the scribes see this, the religious people don't like it. Don't like it. That means we can never fellowship with religious people. We we'll love people, people are not our enemies, but religious people will always oppose the anointing. The term Antichrist. There will be an Antichrist. But the Bible says in the book of 1 John, there are many antichrists. And that word term antichrist means that which opposes the manifestation of the anointing. That which opposes the power of God, or if it can't oppose it, replaces it. So it replaces it with entertainment, it replaces revelation with psychology, with you know, just everything's FAB and stuff like that, okay? And so the spirit of religion has to be exposed and kicked out. And we can't be around that spirit. It pours cold water. I'm burdened when I hear about people who've received miracles from God. And I hate to say it, well, Pastor Trevor touched on this the other day, but, you know, and, and you hear about that sickness coming upon them. If they were around a place of faith and anointing, that would not happen. It, it won't happen. But, you know, I remember when I came, into, I came into divine health in 2009 after 15 years of Crohn's disease and arthritis and the people we were with at the time, the church we were in at the time, they, they weren't thrilled about that. It was like this unspoken of thing, like they, they just couldn't get it. And not long after we got the, the uh, right foot of fellowship, but the rest is history. It's, it's funny, look, listen, we've got to be a people of discernment and we, it's always the case, right, that people that oppose the move of God, the move of the Spirit, it's not the people out there, it's, listen, it's not the homosexuals that are going to oppose the move of God, they're just doing what they do because they're not saved. And some of them will refuse salvation, yes, but many of them won't. It's not even the Muslims, it's not the Muslims. They're just doing what their God says. They've been... They're just obeying their God. It's, it's not all these other people. It's the religious spirit in the church. That's what opposes. Okay? 
and, and like something Pastor Paul Brady said, he said, he, I'll keep quoting, I just want to, obviously, I don't want to claim things as my own. He says, look, we're in a unity as much as, you know, but we can't have an ecumenical style, let's pray together because there's no power. You can't mess about in these days. You've got to get with people who know how to connect with the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So there's no, no unity. Jesus didn't have unity. He reached out to people in that, and some of them came through anyway. What I love about this passage as well, right, it says this. Jesus said to them, Have you never heard, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise? Listen, this is an awesome revelation. That verse of scripture, Matthew 21, 16, is... A New Testament quotation of Psalm 8 verse 2. Psalm 8 verse 2 says this, Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings you have ordained strength. Yeah. Hold on, in the New Testament it says praise. Yeah. Is that wrong? Is that a mistake? No. In the mind of the Spirit, praise and strength are exactly yeah. the same thing. You have ordained strength because of your enemies that you might still the enemy and the avenger. This is what's going to happen when the church is the house of prayer. Amen. The miracles, the power of God is going to explode over leads. And even the weakest people, even the most immature people, the children even, the smallest of children are going to become mighty warriors in God in a day. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you, do you believe that? Yeah. People who struggled for years and have been through this program and that program are going to encounter, finally meet God. Amen. I mean, we had a girl come a few weeks ago on a Sunday. Um, and she, I knew she needed healing, but I didn't want to embarrass her, never embarrass people, and call her up. Sometimes if you feel it's right, you do. And I thought, I'll catch her at the end. Caught her out in the corridor, had a word of knowledge, she had back pain. Prayed for her, and her face absolutely lit up. I said, have you ever experienced this in church? She went, no. That means she hasn't, have you ever met God? I mean, obviously when people get born again, I know they meet God, but it's like, this should be the most normal thing. And it's, it's something so missing. Where is the house of prayer? Why aren't we seeing New Testament, normal, book of Acts, Christianity? Because there's no house of prayer. The altar's broken down. That's, you know, the altars broken. The altars all across the United Kingdom are broken down. And they've got to be rebuilt. And when this happens, you'll have people who struggled for years. And they've maybe tried this program, that program, and they're in unstable, immature. And when they meet with the raw power of God, when they meet with the raw presence of God, they're going to be mighty warriors. Boom, straight away. They're going to overnight become like strong warriors. Those type of people who can stop the enemy, who can still the enemy in the Avenger. Yeah. Wow. Boom! Put the devil right on his feet. Come on, like Pastor Trevor style. I prophesy to you. I love how he pushes faith into you. Right? I speak in the name of Jesus. Every single one of us here and everyone here in this message, you for oh, the strength coming out of your life taken out say there is strength coming out of my life you know the religious spirit and all the heaviness and the antichrist spirit that's across this land has tried to suppress you you've been hungry for God you've been sat in some places and you thought goodness me is there anything moving and you're in a place now where you think yeah I'm starting to come alive and what's happening overnight you're getting transformed and nothing's going to hold you back anymore and you've, you've had you know, depressions, you've had issues, all that's stopping now because you don't need this program, you don't need, you need this psychology, yes there's a place for counselling and all that sort of stuff. What you need is strength. Amen. 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 
that the temple of God is actually alive on the earth today. There's an intersection where God meets man and you're like, goodness me, I'm part of this, I'm meeting with God. And even me, the little or feeble me, can stop Satan dead in his tracks just with one word out of my mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You say, that's me. Hallelujah. Amen. He's perfecting praise from me. He's ordaining strength out of me. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what the church is all about. 1 Peter 2, 5 and 9. It says, We're living stones built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to bring spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. That's what the church is. The church is a temple. It's a place, you know, in the Old Testament, that they didn't have like the coffee lounge. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But the trendy coffee lounge in, in, the, in the temple in Jerusalem. You know, people didn't travel from all over the Greek or Roman world so because there's, a, there's a, I don't know, a Costa coffee or something in the temple at Jerusalem or some kind of like trendy boutique or something like that. Or the, the priests are wearing Gucci Prada, I don't know what else. It's just because they wanted to go and meet God. <laughs> Hallelujah. They wanted to meet the living God. And you see how the priests couldn't stand because the power of God. They, they, they wanted to bring a, a sacrifice before God. And then you even back there before the blood of Jesus was shed that their conscience even for one year because of the, the, the atonement they could present their sin offering before the priest lay hands on that thing transfer their sin by impartation into the animal the animal was slain the animal was killed and they were free and they lived a whole year completely guilt free without a consciousness of sin and they could walk in the blessing of God and that's why they're rich that's why they lived blessed that's why they were rich that's why they were prosperous. That's why their crops multiplied. That's why they had victory. The problems only began, like I said before, when they started getting into different spirits. You see, so when we get the temple set up, we're in the New Testament, we're not in that. We've got a better system, a better blood, not the blood of animals, the blood of Jesus. When we are the church as the temple, the supernatural is going to flourish in our life, victory over the devil. And, you know, I mentioned some of the stuff before, the day and age we're living in. You know, ah man, one of my favourite videos on, on YouTube, I, I love it, and uh, just Google uh, YouTube, TB Joshua, Spirit of Jihad, it's awesome. You want, I want to be in a church filled with power, I mean there you go, you got in Nigeria there, it, it, the, the place in Nigeria that gets more foreign visitors than any other thing, more than any tourist or business thing, is a church. Why? Because it's so full of power that when suicide bombers have tried to come into that church, they've been arrested by the Holy Spirit, <laughs> by the power of God. And then someone's come up and put a mic onto them. Who are you? I'm the spirit of jihad. And just complete talking away. Because the spirit of God is so strong in the house. Why? Because they're a temple. Hallelujah. There's a place, a spiritual sacrifice. What does that tell you? Wherever there's a sacrifice accepted by God, what's going to fall from heaven? Fire. Fire. What's going to come on your children, on our finances, on our health, on our body, in our workplace? Everyone's going to know what we carry. Hallelujah. goes on to say, but you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That means you're different. You don't actually fit in. We're always trying to fit in and be accepted and be trendy. When the church tries to be trendy, I think the world just thinks, okay, whatever. We're not. But we've got what nobody's got and we have access to the presence of God and to the supernatural. Amen. So we are the, hallelujah, we are that peculiar people. Amen. Praise God. So, we are corporately Get this, the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is supernatural school. Why is it about prayer? Why is it about being a temple? Because forget the supernatural without this. There's, there's all kinds of supernatural happening in the world today. And not all of it, even if it looks Christian, some of it's a mixture. Okay? But this is the real deal. We are corporately a temple of the Holy Spirit. Each of us individually is a living stone. Right? Every single one of us carries a measure of the presence and the anointing of God. Some of us may carry more than others, but we're not in competition with each other. And we all have different gifts and manifestations of the Spirit to serve one another. Now get this, right? 
there's a synergy where if you were to add up the sum, if you like, of all the different measures of anointing that we have, put them all together, what you have is greater than the sum. Does that make sense? Now, I love this scripture, it says in Deuteronomy 32.30, it says, How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? One can chase a thousand. Two can put ten thousand to flight. What about two hundred? How many can they put to flight? So, from one putting a thousand to flight, to two putting ten thousand to flight, that is a 900%, I hope I did my maths right, a 900% increase in the measure of anointing and power being manifested through the unity of two people in agreement in God. From 1,000 put to flight to 10,000 of the enemy scattered. That a 900% increase. That's phenomenal. Obviously you can, we can see why marriage is very important. Now if anyone's ever been married for any length of time you know it's a challenge. If two people can have that measure of increase and the Bible says it's possible then obviously there's going to be a resistance to that. It's going to take hard work, it's going to take real work and working at unity so that this corporate anointing is brought about because I want to be part of a corporate anointing because if we talk about, listen, if we talk about the power of God a lot of it's individualized well I've got power I'm moving in power, this person, me and my blessing I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed and a lot of Christian teaching is very what you call, it's, it's just individualistic I mean, we live in the West, not saying that's all wrong, but we live in a Western society that is just about the individual. But the New Testament is written like to the church at Corinth, to the church at Ephesus, it's written to the church. So the supernatural is about where the unity is. And, and yet for the individual, if I have things that need moving in my life, if I, who wants a 900% increase in the power of God manifested in your life? You know, I want to be in a place like if, 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 if I was under attack, if I was facing a battle, if it was a life and death battle, I need a manifestation of the Spirit of God and a release of faith in my life. And, and I want to be, if I can get a 100% increase in that, I want to be there. A couple of years ago we were in a situation, we came out of this church we were part of and we tried different churches and look, we love the church and we were having lovely fellowship in one place. The, honestly, these people were lovely, godly people, they loved God, really loved God and they were friendly and warm. And it was comforting for where we came from, we, you know, we got a little bit bruised. If you know my background, I came out of serious sickness and disease, potentially in the future, potentially life-threatening. So when I'm sat in this house and I hear one in three people get cancer, we've got to steal ourselves for suffering in life. And we look at each other and think, we have to walk and never come here again. Not because we scorn it or judge it, because I never want to be in a place where I'm in an emergency and I haven't got a people of faith and unity around me to see the victory of Jesus Christ come through. I don't want to even be in a place where that stuff, that stuff doesn't even have to come near us, does it? No. We don't have to believe that statistics in the name of Jesus. Just take it. Yeah. Just say, I, I will never have cancer. I'll never have cancer. I'm not afraid of cancer. Nobody in this room will ever have cancer. None of our children will ever have cancer. Yeah. Cancer, in Jesus' name, we're not afraid of you. Cancer is a devil. People worship it. They're impressed with it. It's a devil. Amen. Amen. And, and so this is what I mean, if we are one, 900, 900% increase in the anointing. So this is why we are a temple of the Holy Spirit, living stones built together so that there is a corporate anointing. This is why we pray on a Friday night. If we want our lives transformed, our kids getting saved and breakthrough in our lives, massive miracles in the church. 
this is where it begins right come on then let's uh, come in for the home room Matthew 18 Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 it says again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven now I hear some things that the Lord Jesus says all things are possible to those who believe ask anything of me and it will be done for you and if we're honest enough for many people in their Christian experience that is not ringing true and it causes you to doubt the Word of God but even if our experience doesn't match up to it I don't want to make excuses for it and just live in unbelief as I might not say it's untrue but really I believe it's not true and I live as if it's not true and so I just become a social club instead no we want to press on to maturity and perfection in Christ because who wants to live this type of standard yeah. a Christianity that says anything what does anything mean? Anything. Anything that you ask shall be done. But it says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done of them by my Father which is in heaven. <coughs> now that could simply mean, in most people's understanding, right, we're going to pray about this, we want to see this. Do you agree with me? I agree with you. I agree with you, Mike Murdoch song, for your miracle. But if we read the wider passage, we see what it means to be a people that live in agreement. Man, we want breakthroughs in our lives. It's not the will of God for God's people to live the way they are. With financial burdens, with depression, oppressions, uh, living on... You know, just lives that are under the cosh. It's not the will of God. Stuff's got to change. We've got to see where, where it's the normal. People in Leeds don't ring a psychic hotline because they want supernatural guidance to come to the church. People in Leeds know, my, my, you know, can you imagine the, the fear? Uh, I don't want to imagine it. Their sick child, they bring them to the church. And that sick child is completely made well and the whole family gets saved. Okay? Most people, if you scratch below the surface, are aware of demonic oppression. They might not use that language. I have a demon, stuff like this. But they're aware of it. And when the church has that power where Jesus Christ is shown to be boss, who's the boss? Jesus. It's just like when the devil, when Jesus manifests in the church and he wipes the floor with the devil. Where's people going to come? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now let's look at some of this. It says, if two of you shall agree on earth. That word agree is the word, sum or how do you say it? It's a Greek word meaning symphony. Symphonio, symphonio. It means a people in symphony, in harmony on the earth. Wherever there are a, a people of God living in symphony, as in like an orchestra or like a band. You know, if you heard to hear an orchestra and just one instrument was out of tune with all the others, it would just ruin the whole thing, wouldn't it? You know, one singer in a choir was just singing out a key. And so where, wherever you get a people who are in key together, there is a power of agreement. Jesus says in verse 20, For where, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. That means, as, as Matthew's, gospel, Matthew's gospel is written to people from a Jewish background, the Jewish people, their mindset is, we are the Jewish people, we are a gathered people. We came out of Egypt, we are a distinct holy people set apart for God. Jesus said, if you just get two or three people who identify together in me, I'm going to be there, there's a people who are in symphony, they are going to get miracles from God. Okay. This is a people who are walking in love, and this is where it's hard. Marriage is hard. 
If two people can walk together in unity, they can get a 900% increase of the manifestation of the power of God. If you can get a church of people walking in a high level of love, reconciliation, forgiveness, and a people who walk without offence, you'll get a massive manifestation of the power of God. Because if we back up in this passage, we'll see the context of it. We go to verse 15. It says, If your brother shall trespass against you, shall sin against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he shall hear you, you have gained your brother. Who knows, in church, relationship, tensions, difficulties, strife can get in. The Bible is saying, look, our heart is always to win people. Not to manipulate them into your point of view, but to win the relationship. And obviously it says, if he sins against you, go to him alone. No, what we tend to do in the church is go to everybody else, okay? But it says go to him alone. But anyway, there's a, there's a little bit here about relationship tensions in the church. It says, look, if that doesn't work, go with one, two, go with one or two more, obviously mature people. If that doesn't work, take it before the church and so on and so on. Now, what's this got to do with getting the supernatural manifested? What's this got to do with getting the temple sorted out, getting all the strife out of the temple? Um, you know, and he cleared out financial issues because that's going to cause strife among God's people. Um, when worship is entertainment and it's not God-centered, the people are going to be self-centered and they're not encountering God and so on and so on. But he goes on to say, look, if the, basic, if the church can walk in love and reconciliation, this is what's going to happen. Verse 18 says, Verily I say to you, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay, stick with this, right? we're coming into land. The church of Jesus, a living church, has a presence in the spirit realm. Jesus said in Revelation 2, 5, he said, Look, remember where you have fallen from, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and I will remove your candlestick from its place unless you repent. Jesus is addressing the church there and he's saying, Look, if you don't repent and get back to your first love, I'm going to remove your presence from the spirit realm. So you're going to be a dead church. There's going to be no glory, candlestick, fire. There's going to be no glory. See, we are a church here on the earth, glorified church. We cannot boast in anything but in Jesus. But we've seen the glory and the presence of God. We've experienced the tangibility of His Spirit. We've experienced transformation. Thank God for where that's happening. Amen. That is evidence that we have a candlestick in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. That's awesome. And we never want that candlestick to be removed. We never want our light in the spirit realm ever to be removed. Who wants it? We want it to go brighter, don't we? We want it to get more intense. We want to get it brighter. We never want to be a dead church without a candlestick. Because all we are then is a club. And it's just a social club. And nothing's going to move. No one's going to get set free. Now what's what Jesus is saying here, look... What's happening on earth in your relationships affects the candlestick in heaven. If there's strife and division amongst you in the church on the earth, that means, he's saying, look, whatever is loosed on earth, we'll deal with the loosen first, whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. That word loose in Greek means dissolved. Dissolve. 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 And he's saying, look, if there's strife and division and the bond of the Spirit is being dissolved among you, then it's being dissolved in the heaven as well. And that's serious. And we don't want that. But what's being bound on earth, Ephesians 4 3 says, endeavour. To keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That means we've got to work really hard. It's hard work. It's hard work in a marriage at times. 
to endeavor. It means it takes willpower, it takes a decision, it takes hard work in any relationship or in the church. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Holy Spirit in the bond, in the bond. Whatever is bound on earth, this is a bond. Whatever bond of the Spirit is, or is held together on the earth is held together in the heavens. There's another passage of scripture elsewhere, I think in Matthew's Gospel, where it talks about binding and loosen. That is a different context to this one. This one's entirely to do with the social life of the church. Between brothers, if there is a strife and a division, there is a dissolving on the earth, there's a dissolving in the heavens. If, if there's a bond in the spirit on the earth, there's a bond in the spirit in the heavens, the candlestick, the presence of God in the heavens, the integrity of the light of the church in the spirit realm increases. So we want it in the name of Jesus, in the spirit realm, over Leeds, West Yorkshire, we want our light to come forth. There's deep darkness on the peoples, but I prophesy in the name of Jesus, amen, and we take it that our light is increasing, amen. Our light is going forth, the glory of God's coming upon us, and Gentiles, unbelievers, are coming to the brightness of our rising and they're bringing the, the wealth of the wicked's coming and their souls are coming in in Jesus' name. You know, all these streets around this church and we're going to start, come on, let's start prayer walking in these streets and anointing them with oil. Uh, Pastor Trevor has people in his church who just, just walk the streets of their area, anointing the streets with oil for souls to come forth. And you know what happens? Souls start to come forth and people are getting, people, the salvation's happening. So our heavenly presence increase increase because we work hard at keeping the bond of the Spirit, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That word peace is, is, is the word irene, but it's in their thinking it will be the word shalom. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. And that word shalom means an absence of strife, an absence of agitation, an absence of all these things. It takes hard work. But he says when we have this when we have this, that's when you have a people of harmony, of agreement, the temple of God's been cleansed, the, the, the thief, the destroyer and the killer has been cast out. There's an overflow of light, an overflow of the supernatural in our lives. And we are a people of harmony, of agreement and anything we ask, anything is done by our Father in heaven. That's, this is the operation of the church. Forget all the other stuff. This is the operation. This is where the supernatural begins to manifest. Amen. In Jesus' name. This is revival. Hallelujah. This is the realm of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to go, not just a 900% increase in the anointing, we're going to go for a 2,000% increase in the anointing and the power of God, till it overflows and overflows in our life. And every single one of us is a walk and manifestation of anointing. Hallelujah. I'm praying and I just want to pray and every one of us here is going to get absolutely addicted to prayer. Amen. Because, you know, when we're in prayer together, when we're in prayer together, we just love each other. Yeah. If I'm, and this is what Pastor Paul Brady said last night, he said, look, if I'm praying for you, brother, I can never hate you. Yeah. I can never hate you if I'm praying for you. If we're in prayer together, when you meet people, you, I mean, we used to say in the past, we used to have, pow I mean, we have powerful prayer meetings here, but we have, have particularly powerful prayer meetings on a Friday night in our home. And you, you really meet a person when you pray with them, when we encounter God together. And this is something we're going to build more and more and more amongst us here in Glorify Our Church. This is what brings the move of God. And every person can get involved in it. Every person. And there's people out there that will get saved today, that will be in the prayer meeting the next day. And they'll take it like a duck to water. Because they're born of the Spirit, and this is, they don't want to be anywhere else. Have you ever been in a place where the presence of God is moving in power? And you just, you are just, you never want to leave it. It's the most natural place you want to be. You don't need a nice coffee bar. You don't need it. I'm not saying any of that stuff's wrong. You just want to be where God is moving in Jesus' name. And when the Spirit of God's moving in that place, and people are being arrested in power, demons are being cast out, the blind are being having their eyes open, you think, it's like we've all played a part in that. Our, that corporate anointing, what we brought together, 
That has brought that transformation. That's brought that revival. Come on, let's just. It's nearly nine o'clock now. We're going to just get into the, 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 the glory realm right now. Jesus, thank you, Father.